Alabama, home top of Mississippi, Apostle Point, Georgia, Miami. Who's Amy? Miami. Hey, you mean your Amy? Bo Hunkers. Bo Hunkers? Bo Hunkers. Bo Hunkers? Oh, I'll take your part. Hoboken. Hoboken. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Conductor, I want to go to Hot Town. Hot Town? Yes. Sir. That's the last stop. Hey. All aboard. All right, sir. <laughs> Hey, you know what would help is if I put on audio. You don't know what would also help. This would also help. Yeah, it's been a while since I got in here, hasn't it? Translation Chan, you the real MVP. <laughs> Seems I've been tinkering with things since I was last on. Here we go. We're good. One last thing. Let's check out our symmetrical DACA ward. One there. One there. Those are Shuba Shubas. They're good. We have bigger Shuba Shubas to fry, but we'll bring it with the small Shuba Shubas. Groucho Bailiff. Yep. All right. Priorities. Um, oh, look at that. This Groucho solo. Yeah. Anyway, hey everyone, let's play some Crime and Punishment. Now, I've actually gotten a few new viewers since the last time I was playing this game. New subscribers, welcome aboard, everybody. And some people might actually not know what Crime and Punishment is or how it's played. It is a judge simulation roguelike where everyone is guilty. So it's not like Ace Attorney where you gotta 
find how they are guilty. Everyone here is guilty, and it's simply a matter of deciding which punishment you're going to lay out for said guilty individual. With that, there is the additional score, and boy do I use that term loosely. There's the score, which is your judgment as weighed by a 1984 AI and their judgment. So, prepare to be frustrated. <laughs> also, all the cases are from 1984, as the game is from 1984. Expect there to be sensitive cases, sensitive topics, mature subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. Have your parents <laughs> give over consent that you can watch this. <laughs> and uh, with that said, let's hop in. to be angry also it's uh, open vc on my server so you might see a few people you familiar faces pop in start the game court is now in session your rating will be affected by how much and what kind of information you choose Ooh. The defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of non-support of dependence. <laughs> and we're already yawning. We're off to a stellar start. Let's look at the details of this crime. The crime is... Non-support of dependence. And I'm typing that out in chat so that you can have a good running memory of what this case is. And we'll look at the details of this crime. We're going to look at the demographics. The offender is a 46-year-old black male. The victims were the offender's family. The offender-victim relationship is defined by the crime. We're going to look at the weapon used physical injury. And there was none. The property damage or loss, however, was $575. And the excuse given for this crime is that the offender said he wanted money to bet on the horses. It's a pretty crappy reason there, I gotta tell you. Pretty crappy reason indeed. I'm 75. Could have gone to pay in his uh, dependents, but nope. Had to go and head out to the races. <sighs> oh, oh. I do an early hydration check. Let's look at the offender's criminal record. Now we're going to look at the adult prior crime types for this 46 year old. Specific crime type of information is unavailable. The prior arrests and convictions are six recorded prior arrests and zero recorded prior convictions. The fugitive status on the day of the crime is that the offender is a wall. The offender's reputation. The offender is also known as Babyface. Oh, Babyface didn't make his payments because he had to bet on the horses. Let's look at the pre-sentence report, and we're going to see this individual's personal details. The offender is separated, drinks a lot of tea, and is a self-educated citizen. The employment history is that they are a car salesperson. And the courtroom prosecution details. <sighs> the defendant threatens a pre-witness for the prosecution. The prosecutor calls for a strong sentence at a press conference. We don't need to see the offender's upbringing, and we don't need to see the offender's mental history, so I think we're good. Let's review the known facts. In the case of non-support of dependents, the property damage or loss was $575. The offender-victim relationship is defined by the crime. There was no personal injury. The offender is a 46-year-old male. 
the victims were the offender's family. The offender said he wanted money to bet on the horses. The offender is AWOL. The offender is also known as Babyface. Specific crime type information is unavailable for his past record. However, he has six recorded prior arrests and zero recorded prior convictions. The defendant threatens a pre-witness for the prosecution. The prosecutor calls for a strong sentence at a press conference. The offender is separated, drinks a lot of tea, and is a self-educated citizen. The offender is a car salesperson. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm definitely having a hydration check shortly. And there we go. That is our case, everybody. If you're watching, this is the time when you should enter in what you'd be sentencing, and that would be prison, jail, or probation. And additionally, for how long? Well, let's discuss the case. I, uh, it's non-supported dependence, and it's only for $575. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not big. I don't think this is prison worthy. The question now becomes, is this worth jail or probation? In any other circumstance, I mean, he owned up that it was for the horses. So he pleaded guilty in, a, in essence. I feel that in any other essence, in any, in any other situation, this would be a simple matter of probation because you don't want to take this guy out of the system. If, if he's a car salesman, and by the way, car salesmen, even in 1984, they were making some good coin. I'm certain he could have spared $575. Um... I feel that I feel that I don't want to send him to jail, but I definitely want to put him on probation. And it would be for an extended period of time, ideally 18 years, just to really make sure that he's paying his dependents. However, there's that little nagging incident about threatening a pre-witness for the prosecution. No one does that in my court. And so, with that said, I'm going to sentence this man to three months of jail. I would actually sentence him much longer. I would put him in for a year. Really, based off of the threatening of the pre-witness. But that would be one year taken out of the system, and his dependents would suffer. Three months, I feel, is... The absolute longest I could take him out of the system would have the least impact on his family. And even now, I don't even want to take him out that long, but he has to be punished. No one threatens a pre-witness in my courtroom. With that said, let's take a look at how he scored. Um, how even the scales of justice are. Probation for six years. Well, this judge is a lot more lenient than I am. And yes, three months of jail is heavy handed, especially in this case. But these things happen. Let's take a look at how we scored. We got eight gavels. Splendid work. You have received eight gavels. You have a keen eye for justice. Well, I don't know about that. Gavels. Eight. Judicial IQ. One, five, two. And with that said, we're taking our first hydration check. Hydration check, everybody. <coughs> Hopefully this will ease the throat and stifle the yawns. Well, that wasn't a bad case. That was a good warm-up. Let's take a look at our next case. Remember, everybody, 
It is how much and what kind of information that is important. Ooh. The defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of accepting bribes. Wow, wow, wow. We haven't seen this one in a while. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I just spotted something on the back end and it's fixed and we're good. Okay. Let's take a look at this next case. We're going to look at the details of the crime. And we're looking at the demographics. The offender is a 29-year-old white Catholic male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender-victim relationship. Society is the victim. The weapon used in physical injury. There is none. However, the property damage or loss is also none. So what did this 29-year-old do? Well, the excuse given for this crime is that he said he needed money for a friend's sex change operation. Hmm. He accepted a bribe. A 29-year-old man accepted a bribe because he needed money for a friend's sex change operation. Well, so far, so innocuous. Let's see how it goes. The offender's criminal record is stated by his adult prior crime types and specific crime type of information is unavailable. These things happen. It'll show up. Prior arrests and convictions for this 29-year-old man include 10 recorded prior arrests and zero recorded prior convictions. The fugitive status on the day of the crime is that the offender is not a fugitive. The offender's reputation. The offender is active in politics. Let's take a look at the pre-sentence report. And we're going to check out his personal details. The offender is unwed, smokes hashish, and is a college scholar. His employment history is that he's a white-collar worker. The courtroom prosecution details is the probation officer recommends prison. This is why he's merely a probation officer. 60, man 60 minutes demands an interview. And I don't think we need the offender's upbringing nor mental history on this one. So we're just going to review the known facts. Once again, this is where anyone watching in chat, you can play along by inserting your suggestion as to whether this individual should go to prison, jail, or on probation, and for a length of said sentence. In the crime of accepting bribes, there was no monetary loss. Society is the victim. There was no personal injury. The offender is a 29-year-old white Catholic male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender said he needed money for a friend's sex change operation. The offender is not a fugitive. However, the offender is active in politics. The offender has had 10 recorded prior arrests and zero recorded prior convictions, although a specific crime type of information is unavailable. The probation officer recommends prison. 60 minutes demands an interview. What did this guy do? The offender is unwed, smokes hashish, is a college scholar, and is a white-collar worker. And there you have it, everybody. That's the case of accepting bribes. Now let's figure out how we should judge this case. Hmm. Hama, 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 hama. Well... Nothing happened. The key thing here is that nothing happened. Like, like really? No money. There was no money lost. What is that wording? What's the wording of that? Property damage or loss. There was no monetary loss. So nothing happened. The offender has a activity in politics. 
But that's about it. And even then, what's that even mean? The probation officer recommended prison and 60 Minutes demanded an interview, which means that they think something's up, but we can't trust them. Especially the probation officer. Have you seen that guy? <laughs> However, honestly, I don't think this is anything. I don't think this is anything. We're going, we're going probation. And we're going to say... <sighs> we're going to say three years of probation. Have the probation officer check up with this individual and say, Have you accepted bribes in the last three years for your friend's sex exchange operation? No? Good work. Keep it up. <sighs> All right. That's what I'm saying. Three years of probation. And even that's pretty heavy handed. Jail 17, 17 months. A year and a half of jail. Oh, yeah. A year and a half of jail. Well, we only got one gavel on that. Perhaps we should study medicine. Judicial IQ, 81. We went from eight gavels plummeting down to one gavel. And such is the game. Now y'all know why I love this game. Let's continue. Because now it's time for our next case. Remember, it is how much and what kind of information that is important. We're getting some great ones. The defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of unlawful use of a credit card. Unlawful use of a credit card. Boy, oh boy. This is a real whiz banger. Let's look at the details of this crime. Who is this heinous villain? The demographics that the offender is an 18 year old black male. The victim was a 64 year old black woman. Now, I want to point out the age of this individual 18 years old. Being tried in a court of law at the age of 18, that means that any prior arrests and prior convictions took place within the 1 to 366 days of the year that this individual has been alive at the time of this case. So keep that in mind for any 18-year-olds that we find on the witness stand. On the witness stand, on the... On the on, yeah. Okay. Okay. The demographics are that the offender is an 18-year-old male. The victim was a 64-year-old woman. The offender-victim relationship? They were family members. Oh, man. The weapon used in physical injury. There was none. The property damage or loss was $88,000. What was this young man doing? $88,000. Unlawful use of a credit card. And the excuse given for this crime? He said the devil made him do it. <laughs> okay. I I call shenanigans. <laughs> I I don't think the devil made this kid spend eighty-eight thousand dollars on his family member's credit card. I really don't think the devil made him do it. It's a good excuse. Alright, let's take a look at the offender's criminal record. We're gonna definitely be looking at the juvenile court blotter on this one, but Let's take a look at his adult prior crime types. Now remember, he's 18 and he's being tried as an adult in this adult court of law. This 18 year old's prior crimes include receiving stolen property. His prior arrests and convictions at the age of 18, two recorded prior arrests and one recorded prior conviction. That's unhealthy. His fugitive status on the day of the crime is that he's wanted for child support. This young man has been busy. The juvenile court blotter in the years leading up to this day, the offender's juvenile offenses include bicycle theft. Hmm. The honestly, I don't know that we want to look at the offender's reputation. We kind of should, but 
All right, well, I'll get the offender's reputation. The offender is sexually aberrant. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything except in the case of him being somewhat reticent for, for child support. Let's take a look at the pre-sentence report. And we're going to look at personal details. The offender is widowed. He's only 18. My condolences, young man. The offender is widowed. He sniffs coke. Ooh, that, you're only 18. And he's a high school dropout. He wasn't in there for very long if he's a dropout. The employment history. Is that he... <laughs> This 18-year-old man is a sex therapist. And you know what? That sexually arrogant thing, aberrant, 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 that, that actually, that's a bonus. That's actually somewhat of a, not a detriment when it comes to sex therapy. All right. We're going to look at the courtroom prosecution details. Evidence showed that the defendant was easily led by his friends. His friends are the devil. <laughs> the defendant was easily led by his friends. <laughs> hey, listen, as soon as you get off work, being a sex therapist, the devil wants you to spend your family members $88,000 on credit cards. The press was excluded from the courtroom. I feel that it's justifiable. I think that because it's involving a family member, we should look at the offender's upbringing. The offender's parents were happily married and the offender was raised on a ranch in California. Sounds pleasant. All right. Well, let's review the known facts. Once again, if you're playing along at home, this is when you have the opportunity to write down on a napkin or even in chat what you would sentence and for how long. In the crime of unlawful use of a credit card, the property damage or loss was $88,000. The offender and the family, it, <laughs> the offender and victim were family members. There was no personal injury. The offender is an 18-year-old man. The victim was a 64-year-old woman. The offender said the devil made him do it. Capital D. The offender is wanted for child support. The offender is sexually aberrant. Prior crimes include receiving stolen property, and the offender's juvenile offenses include bicycle theft. The young man at age of 18 has had two recorded prior arrests and one recorded prior conviction. Evidence showed that the defendant was easily led by his friends. The press was excluded from the courtroom. The offender's parents were happily married and the offender was raised on a ranch in California. The offender is widowed, my condolences, sniffs coke, is a high school dropout, and is a sex therapist. And there you have it, the wild and waggy case of unlawful use of a credit card. What a lot to unpack, eh? Okay. Um, I don't believe this is prison worthy. I definitely do not feel this is prison worthy. He's 18 years old. And I want to put him on probation for this one. I I think that... See, the problem is the $88,000. If this were a case that involved all of these facts, but the amount of money was maybe 500 bucks, it would be a probation issue. However... The $88,000 is a factor. I don't know how much support he would get in jail. Like, that's a problem. I don't... I don't feel that he would... I don't feel he'd be... 
rehabilitated in jail. Let's assume I go probation. If we go probation on this 18-year-old, then it's going to be for quite a few years. It'll be for like 10 years. But that's a long time to keep him engaged with someone in the system, looking out for the best interests, trying to make a better person out of this young man. If you were to equivalent jail time in that respect, it would be, what, two years of jail? Maybe? But that would take him out and throw him into a, an environment that is unhealthy. He's got a job. I, 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 I can only imagine that being a therapist actually rakes in some good coin. So sex therapy, that's a fairly decent job. I feel if he's on probation, he would be monitored and assisted. So I'm going to put probation for 10 years. $88,000. Ideally, if he stays with sex therapy, he will pay that back. But I can't see prison. And honestly, I can't see jail. Let's see how we scored. Probation, seven years, six months. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. It is so rare for us to be on the same page. I'm happy. I'm, I'm actually incredibly happy that the green judge sided with common sense. Well done. We received seven gavels. Sharpen your skills with another case. I think I may very well do that. Thank you very much. And we have a judicial IQ of 97. It's currently the top of the hour. Welcome aboard, anyone who's uh, joining in. And... We're going to look at our next case. Remember, it is how much and what kind of information that is important. Actually, I feel a cough coming, so I'm just going to take another quick hydration check. Hydration check, everybody. Hydration check. Good, good, good. Now it's time for our next case. Remember. It is how much and what kind of information that is important. Yikes. Nope. Too sensitive. 99 years. Kabam. Greetings, Greed. How are you doing tonight? Good to see you in the chat. Welcome aboard. We're playing some crime punishment as per usual. We're going to take a look at the details of the crime... Oh, hijacking. In 1984, that's... I'm trying to think of an equivalent hijacking movie from 1984. The only closest thing I can think of is Back to the Future from 1985. Right. Let's look at the crime of hijacking, which is a pretty serious crime, I gotta admit. Yeah, the details of this crime are... The offender is a 24-year-old white Protestant male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender-victim relationship. The offender gave no thought to any of the victims. Well, that's not good. The weapon used and physical injury. There was none. However, property damage or loss was $59,000. That's the cost of a low-end plane or a high-end automobile in 1984 the excuse given for this crime the offender said the reason was political and how old was this guy this guy was 24 years old the reason was political political hijacking the offender's criminal record now we're gonna look at adult prior crime types prior crime types include speeding <laughs> just like that Gentleman on the motorcycle outside my window. Prior crimes include speeding. The prior arrests and convictions are six recorded prior arrests and one recorded prior conviction. The 
fugitive status on the day of the crime is that the offender is wanted for child support. The offender's reputation. The offender is a con artist. Con Air. That was a hijacking movie. Went all the way to Las Vegas, if I recall. Let's take a look at the pre-sentence report. And we're going to look at personal details. The offender is recently divorced. Choose Tobacco is a criminal justice major. That's huge. And for the employment history, the offender is a civil servant. Hmm. Go back one. A criminal justice major in a case of hijacking. Ha! Huh. And a civil servant. The courtroom prosecution details are the defendant, the defendant squealed on his accomplices. The defendant was defended by a public defender. I think they throw that sentence in just to make it a tongue twister for everybody. I don't think we need to look at offenders' upbringing or mental history, and with that, we're ready for the pre uh, for, for the pre sentence for the review of the known facts. Once again, this is the time when anyone wanting to play along can choose what they would like for sentencing and length of sentencing. You to real MVP translation chant. In the case of hijacking, the property damage or loss was $59,000. The offender gave no thought to any victims. There was no personal injury. The offender is a 24-year-old white Protestant male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender said the reason was political. The offender is wanted for child support. The offender is a con artist. Prior crimes include speeding. Recorded priors include six recorded prior arrests and one recorded prior conviction. The defendant squealed on his accomplices. The defendant was defended by a public defender. The offender is recently divorced. Chews Tobacco is a criminal justice major and a civil servant. And with that, we have the case of hijacking. If anyone has anything they would like to toss in, please throw it in chat now. Uh, well, this person is definitely not going on probation. I can assure you that. Crime of hijacking, $59,000. Give no thought to any of the victims. Hmm. They're a criminal justice major, so they're not unintelligent. I definitely feel this is prison worthy. And I think this is, I'd say two and a half years of prison. My justification for two and a half years is that I can't see it being five years of prison. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it is. Yeah, maybe it is. Because we are talking like $59,000. Like, whatever he hijacked, it wasn't a child's tricycle. It, it had substance. So, and he did say the reason was political, so he did admit guilt to it all. Mm, I'd go as low as four, but I feel that five is a good and healthy sentence for this crime. So we're going to go five years of prison. Now let's see how he did. Eight years of prison. Well... I wasn't too far off the mark. In fact, I was light and I was probably going to go light. I wouldn't do much heavier than five. So eight years of prison. Let's see how we scored. Hmm. Not bad. Five gavels. Keep practicing. This isn't small claims court. You know, it's been so long since I played this solo. Judicial IQ 80. It's been a very long time since I've played this solo. Where'd my, where'd my comment? There it is. Doot doot. <laughs> my comment was made, but it didn't quite register. Um, and I feel that being away from this game for so long and not playing it solo... I'm doing great. Typically, I will get one gavel. Typically, I will get 
the worst uh, selection. I, I will be weighed heavily against. I almost never am in tune with the Green Judge, which means either I've adapted my ways to the Green Judge or the Green Judge has adapted his ways to mine. Anyway, now it's time for our next case. Remember, it is how much and what kind of information that is important. And the defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of welfare fraud. Oakley Doakley. Incidentally, do I have that one thing? Not yet, I don't. Oh, interesting. We'll do that when it comes along. And let's take a look at the details of this crime. And we're going to go into demographics. The offender is a 36-year-old black Catholic woman. The victims are the state and the people. The offender-victim relationship, society is the victim. The weapon used and physical injury, there was none. The property damage or loss was $690. The excuse given for this crime of welfare fraud, the offender said she needed the money. She needed $690, so she committed welfare fraud. Hmm. We'll see if she's really that hard up for cash or not. Once again, she's a 36-year-old woman. The offender's criminal record, her adult prior crime types, specific crime type of information is unavailable. However, for prior arrests and convictions, she's squeaky clean. Her fugitive status on the day of the crime is she's squeaky clean. <laughs> we don't even need to see the offender's reputation. It's the cleaner. Let's take a look at the pre-sentence report. And we're going to look at her personal details. This 36-year-old is divorced. She doesn't use drugs. She's a seminarian. Her employment history says she's a seasonal worker. The courtroom prosecution details the defendant pleaded guilty and the defendant was defended by a legal aid attorney. I feel for this woman. I truly feel for this woman. Take a look at the root known facts here. So she's 36 years old. And property and lit damage or loss was $690 for welfare fraud. Society's the victim and there was no personal injury. She said she needed the money and she's clean. Specific crime type information is unavailable because she has no recorded prior arrests. She pleaded guilty. She was defended by a legal aid attorney. She's divorced. She doesn't use drugs. She's a seminarian. She's a seasonal worker. Everything about this case... Pardon the gentleman outside as he thinks that a traffic light allows him to use the street as NASCAR. <laughs> Here it comes. Wait for it. Wait for it. Three, two, one. And they're off. There he goes. Oh, he took off normally. There must be a police nearby. So everything about this case is that this woman is... I, I feel for this woman. I think this is a non-case. I'm going to give this woman probation. I mean... I want to help this woman out, if anything. And it's not going to be long. It's going to be... It's going to be one year of probation. One year of probation will allow her to enter into the system, make sure that she's receiving the help she needs, and provide her services where, once she has done her one year of probation, she still has access to those services. They won't be gone. They'll, they'll be assisting. So... Let's take a look at our score. One year of probation for $690 of welfare fraud. And then six years, six and a half years of probation. Well, this judge wanted to see her betterment for a longer span. I feel that's a little too hefty. Gavels, one. 
judicial. IQ. 68. That's a little bit of a shame, but... Well. I still feel justified. And that's where being a judge in a case, in a court of law, you can feel justified. In fact, it's the only place where you can legally feel justified. Now it's time for our next case. Remember, it is how much and what kind of information that is important. Nope. Too sensitive? We're going to skip to the next. The defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of burglary of a business. All right. Well done. Burglary of a business, and let's take a look at the details of this crime. We're going to look at the demographics. The offender is a 42-year-old Hispanic male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender-victim relationship, he said that the victims should have been more careful while he was burglaring their business. Good job there, 42-year-old guy. The weapon used physical injury. None. However, property damage or loss was $30. They should have been... They should have been more careful during that $30 exchange of a business. The excuse given for this heinous act of villainy. He said he needed money to support a drug habit. Who did he rob that he only got $30? A hamster store? The offender's criminal record. Wait, how old was this guy? How old was this guy? 42 years old. His criminal record. His adult prior... The, the 42 year old's adult prior crime types leading up to this incident include con games. His prior arrests and convictions include 10 recorded prior arrests and 9 recorded prior convictions. This man has seen some stuff. The fugitive status on the day of the crime is that he left a drug detoxification program on the day of the crime and he burgled a business for $30 for drug money. <sighs> well, we're going to look at the pre sentence report. And. The, what a crazy case, the personal details of this man. He's recently married. Congratulations. He doesn't drink and he's an expellee from a reformatory. The employment history is that he's an itinerant, which means he's a drifter. He's someone who just travels from place to place. He has no job. The court and prosecution details state the defendant gave the police information on other serious crimes. If anyone's going to know, it's going to be this guy. A mayoral candidate calls this a test KC for the system. Oh, I've never seen that typo. <laughs> that could be a possible bug, and we may not get a possible resolution out of this case. We don't need to see the offender's upbringing, nor do we need to see the offender's mental history, and so let's... Reveal your own facts. Once again, for those in chat, for those playing along, for those watching on the VOD, this is your opportunity to write down what you would sentence this case as. And for the length of time. In the crime of burglary of a business, the property damage or loss was $30. The offender said that the victims should have been more careful. There was no personal injury. The offender is a 42-year-old man. The victims are the state and the people. The offender said he needed money to support a drug habit, and that's quite the case because the offender left a drug detoxification program on the day of the crime. Prior crimes include con games. This man has had 42 recorded prior arrests and 9 recorded prior convictions. The defendant gave the police information on other serious crimes. A mayoral candidate calls this a test case for the system. The offender is recently married, doesn't drink, is an expellee from a reformatory and he is an itinerant. No. Translation Chan, no. Alright. 
So, here's what I think. He's had 10 recorded prior... Uh, 10 recorded prior arrests, 10 recorded prior convictions, or one or the other. Flip-flop, doesn't matter, it's a lot. He's 42 years old. He left a drug detoxification program to immediately rob a business for $30, saying he needed money to support a drug habit. Here's my narrative. This man who gave up serious information on other serious crimes, this man was in the drug detoxification program when he was alerted to another serious crime. The moment he was alerted to another serious crime, he was compelled to tell the police about it. And so he immediately went to the nearest business, maybe even next door. It was a travel brochure agency. And he robbed them for $30 and told them to call the cops. And he waited till the cops arrived and he got into the cop vehicle. And he said, there's a serious crime. And he gave up his confederates on serious crimes. I think this man did a public service. I think this man did a public service. For, that's why he didn't give any thought to the victims of the crime. It was for 30 bucks and he had other things on his mind. I think this man should be commended. This man should be awarded a medal. Should receive a purple heart. Or purple star, or whatever purple awards they give for people to do good things. You should get a purple sticker on his badge. This guy's getting probation. And it's going to be for five years. And that's mostly just kind of keep him in the loop. Three years of prison. <laughs> This green judge immediately thought, this guy needs to be tossed back into the system to give us more information on serious crimes. <laughs> viewers, gentle viewers, my friends, I feel that I constructed a better narrative than this green judge. Our judicial IQ is 54. I like that case. I, I like my narrative of that case. Because in my narrative, this man is recently wed. And he he's on probation, so he gets to hang out with his newlywed wife. Good job for him. Or husband. Like, you know, whatever. But in, uh, in that green judge world, that guy's going away. Conjugal visits in the trailer. Now it's time for our next case. Remember, everybody... It is how much and what kind of information that is important. In this case, the defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of bribery. And let's take a look at the details of this crime. We're going to look at the demographics. The offender is a 29-year-old black Protestant male. The victim was a 42-year-old white male. The offender-victim relationship, they were acquaintances. The weapon used in physical injury, in this case of bribery, was none. However, property damage or loss was also none. The excuse given for this crime, the offender said he had an irresistible urge to commit bribery. <laughs> How old? 29 years old. He's like, I'm committing bribery today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat me some cornflakes and go commit some bribery. Oh no, I got caught for committing bribery. <laughs> the offender's criminal record. Let's take a look at his adult prior crime types. The offender has also committed property crimes. His prior arrests and convictions are four recorded prior arrests and four recorded prior convictions. Fugitive status on the day of the crime was that the offender was released on his own recognizance. I'm curious what the offender's reputation is here. The briber. He's known as Lucky. Hey, it's Lucky. Hey, everyone, did you see Lucky the briber? He likes his bribing. 
The pre-sentence report is the 29-year-old's personal details are that he is honeymooning. Congratulations. He abstains from drinking and he is a law school applicant. Oh, he's a law school applicant. He likes him some law school, so much so that he wants to be involved. His employment history is that he's a psychological counselor. Hey, Doc, listen. I'm, uh, I'm thinking of doing some bribery later on. I encourage this behavior. <laughs> All right, let's look at the courtroom prosecution details. The probation officer recommends leniency. A public pressure group calls you weak. Bribery. Let's review the known facts. This case of bribery. There was no monetary loss. The offender and the victim were acquaintances. There was no personal injury. The offender is a 29-year-old male. The victim was a 42-year-old male. The offender said he had an irresistible urge to commit bribery. The offender was released on his own recognizance. The offender is also known as Lucky. The offender has also committed property crimes. Recorded prior arrests, sorry, four recorded prior arrests and four recorded prior convictions. The probation officer recommends leniency. A public pressure group calls you weak. The offender is honeymooning. Congratulations. The offender abstains from drinking, is a law school applicant, and is a psychological counselor. Well, well, well. I think it's time to reach a decision. If anyone in chat has any ideas, please throw them in now for what you would sentence this individual under and for what length of time. Now then, the crime is bribery. However, I don't feel that it's prison worthy. I don't, nothing happened. Nothing happened. There was no damage. There was no loss. Nothing happened. He committed bribery and he was caught. So, you know what? I'm going to put him in jail for 30 days. I'm putting him in there for a month in the who's gal. In the clink. Because, uh, I don't know. He's a law school applicant. He should know better. And being 30 days in jail will remind him of what happens when people who are applying for law school, commit bribery. <laughs> Judge says a little bit harsher, eight months, 28 days, going for three quarters of a year. Now, I only got one gavel on that. As per usual. And our judicial IQ once again plummets a little further. Down to 49. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's do another hydration check. Hydration check, everybody. Mm -mm, it loves me some water. Now it's time for our next case, remember. It is how much and what kind of information that is important. Uh, the defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of criminal negligence. These ones are interesting. These ones, uh, they can go either way. Sometimes they're benign and placid. Other times they are a right firestorm. Let's take a look at the details of this crime. And we're going to look at the demographics. The offender is a 46-year-old white Mormon male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender-victim relationship? The offender didn't think anyone would be hurt. 46-year-old guy didn't think anyone would be hurt. With criminal negligence. The weapon used physical injury. A falsified test result on auto brakes caused thousands of accidents. It's not good. It's not good. The property... <sighs> the property damage or loss was $1.3 million. <laughs> okay. 
we're assuming thousands of vehicles, right? So, I mean, even if it's only 1,000 vehicle, uh, yeah, let's say it's 2,000 vehicles, that's still 6,500... Okay, 650,000... Yeah, my math. Anyway, doesn't matter. $6,300. Yeah, who cares? My math. It's late. I'm not here for math, I'm here for judging. Anyway, this, uh, this, this, this guy falsified the test result on auto brakes causing thousands of accidents up to $1.3 million. Let's look at the excuse given for this crime. He said he was innocent, but he also said that he didn't think anyone would be hurt. I don't know, that's conflicting. Let's look at the offender's criminal record. And we're going to look at his adult prior crime types. They include extortion. Oh man, this guy's been in the system. His prior arrests and convictions include 12 recorded prior arrests and 6 recorded prior convictions. This guy has been in the system. His future status on the day of the crime is that he's a bail jumper. Uh, let's look at his reputation. He's sexually aberrant. That means nothing. We're going to look at the pre-sentence report and we're looking at his personal details. The offender is married. He's a teetotaler. He's a community college student. The employment history is that he's a white-collar worker. The coroner prosecution details the defendant still claims his innocence. A TV reporter predicts you, the player, will imprison the defendant. Huh. Well. We're going to review the known facts on this one, all right? some technical errors there we go we're back okay in the crime of criminal negligence oh, the property damage or loss was 1,003 1, maybe I am getting tired or maybe math is making me tired <clears throat> let's start over in the crime of criminal negligence, property damage or loss was $1.3 million. The offender didn't think anyone would be hurt. A falsified test result on auto brakes caused thousands of accidents. The offender is a 46-year-old white Mormon male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender said he didn't do it. The offender is a bail jumper. The offender is sexually aberrant, which has no relevance. Prior crimes include extortion. Recorded priors include 12 recorded prior arrests and 6 recorded prior convictions. The defendant still claims his innocence. A TV reporter predicts you, with a player, will imprison the defendant. The offender is married, is a teetotaler, is a community college student, and is a white-collar worker. Oi, oi, oi. Alright. So... 1.3 million dollars this guy he's not gonna be able to pay that back he claims innocence he claims innocence and continues to claim innocence but he also thought no one would be hurt he's had an extensive record including extortion, and I can't help but think that this guy, even despite him claiming innocence, is guilty. Again, he's claiming innocence. Uh, it's up to the court of law to sentence an individual who has been tried and uh, who has been being tried because they have been found guilty. So, we're not dropping the case. We're not dropping any of the charges. We are absolutely going to be putting this guy away. He's a white-collar worker. There's no way he can pay this back, so I feel prison is the only sentence we can give this guy. 
thousands of accidents. It didn't even say how many of them included physical damage. You can't just have one thousand thousands. You can't have one point three million dollars worth of thousands of accidents and bumper f or or tail light errors. So there was some harm done. I think this guy should go away for more than five years, but less than ten. I feel seven point five is too low for a halfway mark. So I'm gonna say eight years of prison for this man. We don't know many of those accidents caused death and hopefully none of them did but that does not negate the fact that th there was a lot of damage in this one we're going eight years of prison and i feel that if it was up to 13 years of prison it would still be justified Two years of prison. <sighs> Two years of prison. IQ 45. That's, uh, that's some bullshit. <sighs> now it's time for our next case. Remember, it is how much and what kind of information that is important. And such good ones. The defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of possession of burglar's tools. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. And we're going to take a look at the details of this crime. We're going to look at the demographics. The offender is a 48-year-old black male. The victims are the state and the people. The offender-victim relationship, society is the victim. The weapon used to physical injury was none. The property damage or loss was also none. The excuse given for the crime of possession of burglar's tools... Is that the devil made him do it? This 48-year-old man got caught wielding a crowbar, a set of lockpicks, some sleeping gas, a diamond edge cutter for a window, and said, oh yeah, the devil made me do this. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at the offender's criminal record. This 48-year-old man has prior crimes, including conspiracies. His prior arrests and convictions are... Four recorded prior arrests and two recorded prior convictions. His fugitive status on the day of the crime is that he's wanted by the FBI. Ooh, he's wanted by the FBI. I accidentally clicked on his reputation and he's a known racketeer. But let's head back. He's wanted by the FBI. Hmm. That's his fugitive status on the day of the crime. This guy's got a lot going on. I don't think the devil made him do it. Let's take a look at the pre-sentence report. And we're going to take a look at personal details. The offender is engaged to be married. Congratulations. He uses heroin and he is a community college student. His employment history is that he's a private investigator. Okay, you know what? The crime is possession of burglar's tools. This is an interesting detail here. The court of prosecution details the defendant threatens a prosecution witness. Oh, don't do that. The ACLU says that a harsh sentence would be an outrage. Man. Every time there's like 
a twist in the case, it gets undermined. Let's review the known facts. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, the crime is possession of burglar's tools. So, someone who does uh, entry into another person's possessions. There was no monetary loss. Society is a the victim. There was no personal injury. The offender is a 48-year-old man. The victims are the state and the people. The offender said the devil made him do it. He's also wanted by the FBI. He's a known racketeer. His prior crimes include conspiracies, but he's had four recorded prior arrests and two recorded prior convictions. The defendant threatens a prosecution witness. The ACLU says that a harsh sentence would be an outrage. The offender is engaged to be married. Congratulations. He uses heroin. He's a community college student. And he's a private investigator. And, and for context, let's remember that Sherlock Holmes was a private investigator who used opium. So, I mean, take that on for what it is. But I don't think Sherlock Holmes threatened a prosecution witness. <laughs> I don't think Sherlock Holmes was wanted by the FBI. So, I gotta say, um... Uh, I th <laughs> All right. Realistically, realistically, it's possession of broker's tools. All it is is possession of broker's tools. That's all it is. It's nothing else. He's he's walking around. He's got some tools that could be used by burglars. <sighs> I can't see that being prison worthy. I can't. And nothing happened. There was no monetary loss. There was no physical damage. No property damage. So nothing happened. Mm. But he did threaten a pre-witness. And he is wanted by the FBI. So I am definitely thinking jail time. And I'm thinking hefty jail time. Enough jail time for the FBI to get a hold of this guy. <laughs> didn't say why he was wanted by the FBI. Might be in relation to his career as a private investigator. But you know what? He's going away. He's going to do five years in, in county jail. That's not five years. Come on, math. He's doing five years in county jail. <laughs> I, almost, I almost gave him a slap on the wrist. Let's see if this green guy gives him a slap on the wrist. Green guy gave him a slap on the wrist. Eight and a half months of jail. Well. Figures. We're not doing too great here, are we, friends? Let's see. Gavels. One. Remember at the start when I said, hey, I've never had such a good streak. And the moment I said that, I just started getting inundated with one gavels. Well, here we are. We're 15 minutes to the top of the hour. I'm really questioning. And by the way, this is me looking out my windows that look. I'm really questioning whether I should play one last case and maybe go for some food. Yeah. I'll play it by ear, because I am yawning and I'm yawning and I'm hungry. But I think we can do at least one more case. I'm sure that if anyone pops in to the voice chat, that'll wake me up and spur me to better things. But for the moment, we're going to do one last case tentatively. Now it's time for our next case. Remember, it is how much and what kind of information that is important. And the defendant is to be sentenced for the crime of assault and burglary. These can be rough, so I'm going to skip it. I'm going to take it as a sensitive case. And boy, oh boy, is it a good thing I did. 
You're in for a great one, friends. The crime here is assassination. Okay. The crime is assassination. The details of this crime. We're going to look at the demographics. The offender is a 39-year-old Hispanic Catholic male. The victim was a 60-year-old white Protestant woman. The offender-victim relationship? They were neighbors. The weapon used physical injury. The victim died in a booby-trapped car. What the... What the... So... Wait a minute. Crime is assassination. They were neighbors. This 39-year-old man booby-trapped his 60-year-old neighbor's car. Property damage or loss was $1 million. And the loss of life. Assassination. Like, this is no accident. This 39-year-old this man did it. The excuse given for this crime? He said he didn't do it. He didn't assassinate his neighbor in a booby-trapped car for one million dollars of damages and loss of life. He didn't do it. Let's take a look at the offender's criminal record. We're going to look at his adult prior crime types. They include traffic offenses. Where else are you going to learn about how to booby-trap a car? The prior arrests and convictions for this 39-year-old man are six recorded prior arrests and one recorded prior conviction. The fugitive status on the day of the crime is that he was on probation. We're going to look at the offender's reputation. The offender is also known as the Doc. Typically in cases involving murder, death, assassination, we do look at the full record. And so we're going to look at this juvenile court blotter just to see a little bit deeper into his youth. The, the offender's juvenile offenses include running away. It's not much of anything. The pre-sentence report, and we're going to look at the personal details. This 39-year-old man is judicially separated. He drinks socially. He has a grammar school education. And his employment history is that he can't hold down a job. The courtroom prosecution details. The probation officer recommends probation on a $1 million assassination case. <sighs> State commission investigates you for corruption. The offender's upbringing. The offender's mother axe murdered his father, and the offender comes from an urban ghetto. His mental history is that the offender displays wanton behavior. Hmm. And there we go. The crime is assassination. For those playing along, now's your chance. While we review the known facts, uh, please offer up your sentencing and how long that sentencing is. In the crime of assassination, the property damage or loss was $1 million. The offender and the victim were neighbors. The victim died in a booby-trapped car. The offender is a 39-year-old Hispanic Catholic male. The victim was a 60-year-old white Protestant woman. He said he didn't do it. The offender was on probation. The offender is also known as the dog. Prior crimes include traffic offenses. The juvenile offenses for the offender include running away. He has had six recorded prior arrests as an adult and one re recorded prior conviction. The probation officer recommends probation. A state commission investigates you for corruption. The offender's mother was... Uh, the offender's mother axe murdered his father... And the offender comes from an urban ghetto. The offender displays wanton behavior. The offender is judicially separated, drinks socially, and has a grammar school education. Also, the offender can't hold down a job. When we reach this decision, we'll ask if we want the death penalty. And we always say no. But that's how serious this crime is. And now, let's measure it up. There's no way this guy pleading innocence didn't do it um and if he is i mean 
it doesn't matter. He's 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 being tried as though he is guilty. We we're definitely sentencing prison. There's no two ways about it. There was a loss of life. Um, however, I'm almost inclined to go with the probation officer on this one. I mean, the crime itself is horrific. And he will be going away for at least 10 years of, of prison time. This was assassination. This was not just murder with intent. This was, this was murder with intent. Um,